If you have light on light, you have nothing. If you have dark on dark, you basically have nothing. From heartbreaking personal battles to fierce fights over his legacy, the real Bob Ross story is one you haven't heard. Join us as we uncover the shocking truths behind the beloved painter's serene smile. Bob's Childhood Bob Ross, born Robert Norman Ross on October 29, 1942, in Daytona Beach, Florida, grew up in a modest home in Orlando. His father, Jack Ross, was a carpenter, and his mother, Ollie Ross, worked as a waitress. Bob's early life was simple, filled with the typical experiences of a boy growing up in Florida. However, it was also marked by a few unique characteristics that would shape the man he would become. From a young age, Bob displayed a profound love for animals. He was known to bring home injured creatures of all kinds, from snakes and alligators to armadillos and squirrels. This compassion for animals was a consistent theme throughout his life, later becoming a charming element of his television show. Bob once said, I guess I've always been a little bit of a softie. I like to see things happy. Bob's school life, however, was not ideal. By the time he reached the ninth grade, he had decided that traditional schooling wasn't for him. He dropped out of high school and started working with his father. This decision, though unconventional, was driven by a desire to take control of his life and contribute to his family. Working with his father as a carpenter, Bob learned the value of hard work and precision. However, this period was not without its challenges. One particularly harrowing incident occurred when Bob lost part of his left index finger in a carpentry accident. Despite this setback, he remained undeterred. His ability to hold a palette and paint later in life was not hindered by this injury. Reflecting on this accident, Bob would often tell his viewers, we don't make mistakes, we just have happy accidents, a philosophy that he lived by. During these formative years, Bob's interests extended beyond carpentry. He was fascinated by the beauty of the natural world, often spending time outdoors, soaking in the landscapes that would later inspire his art. The seeds of his future career were planted during these quiet moments of observation and appreciation for nature's splendor. Despite the hardships, Bob's early life was also marked by moments of joy and discovery. He was a curious and creative child, always looking for ways to express himself. This creative spirit found an early outlet in the form of simple sketches and drawings, a hobby that he pursued with quiet passion. Military Service Years after his early years working as a carpenter, Bob sought a different path. In 1961, just a few months after turning 18, he joined the U.S. Air Force. This decision marked a significant shift in his life, taking him far from his familiar surroundings in Florida. Standing tall at 6 foot 2 inches, Ross cut an impressive figure. However, his height and flat feet meant that he couldn't train as a pilot or work directly on planes. Instead, he was assigned a desk job as a medical records technician. Ross's role in the Air Force might have seemed mundane, but it provided him with a stable career. Over the years, he diligently worked his way up the ranks, eventually becoming a master sergeant. This position put him in charge of a large number of recruits and servicemen, making him responsible for maintaining order and discipline. Despite his success in the military, Bob found little joy in his role as a disciplinarian. He was often the one tasked with enforcing strict rules, making sure that everything was in order, and sometimes even yelling at recruits for their mistakes. This tough, authoritative role earned him the nickname Bust Em Up Bobby. But behind the stern facade, Bob was deeply uncomfortable with the harshness that his job required. He once said, The job requires you to be a mean, tough person. And I was fed up with it. His time in the military, however, wasn't all about discipline. Stationed at the Eielson Air Force Base in Alaska, Bob was surrounded by the stunning natural beauty of the Alaskan wilderness. The snow-covered mountains and serene landscapes deeply influenced him, sparking a love for nature that would later become evident in his art. It was in Alaska that he first started to explore painting, using it as an escape from the rigidity of military life. 
Bob Ross made a promise to himself during his time in the Air Force. He vowed that if he ever left the military, he would never yell at anyone again. This commitment to kindness and gentleness would become a cornerstone of his public persona. Reflecting on his military days, he often told his viewers, I was the guy who made you scrub the latrine and make your bed, and when I left the military, I decided I'd never be that way again. Artistic Awakening Bob's further journey into painting began at a USO club where he took his first painting class. This hobby quickly became a form of escape and relaxation for him. As he painted, he found solace in the strokes of his brush and the ability to create beautiful scenes on canvas. He once shared, The secret to doing anything is believing that you can do it. Anything that you believe you can do strong enough, you can do. Anything. As long as you believe. His interest in painting grew deeper when he stumbled upon a television show called The Magic of Oil Painting in 1975. Hosted by German painter William Alexander, the show introduced Bob to the wet-on-wet -wet technique, also known as a la prima. This method involved applying wet paint on top of still wet layers, allowing for faster and more spontaneous painting. Bob was amazed at how quickly Alexander could complete a painting, something that had previously taken him days to achieve. He was inspired and a bit frustrated at the same time. He recalled, it almost made me angry the first time I saw Alexander on TV, that he could do in a matter of minutes what took me days to do. Determined to master this technique, Bob practiced tirelessly, experimenting with landscapes inspired by the Alaskan wilderness around him. As his skills improved, Bob started selling his paintings to supplement his military income. He often painted on gold panning tins and sold them to tourists. His ability to create beautiful scenes quickly made his work popular, and he began earning more from his paintings than his military salary. He also gave painting demonstrations, which helped him refine his technique and build confidence in his abilities. In 1981, after 20 years of service, Bob retired from the Air Force as a Master Sergeant. With a clear vision for his future, he sought out William Alexander, eager to learn directly from the man who had inspired him so much. Bob became Alexander's best student and eventually a certified instructor in the wet-on-wet -wet technique. This partnership, however, would later turn into a complicated relationship as Bob's own fame began to grow. Rise to Fame In 1982, Bob's life took a significant turn when he met Annette and Walt Kowalski. Annette, who had recently lost her son, attended one of Bob's painting classes and was captivated by his talent and kind nature. Recognizing his potential, she convinced her husband, Walt, a retired CIA agent with business expertise, to help Bob launch a television show. Together, they pooled their resources and started what would become an iconic partnership. In January 1983, the Joy of Painting premiered on PBS. The show was an instant success, drawing viewers in with its unique blend of art instruction and Bob's engaging personality. Each half-hour episode featured Bob creating a landscape painting from start to finish, using the wet-on-wet -wet technique. His ability to transform a blank canvas into a beautiful scene in just 30 minutes amazed and inspired his audience. Bob's encouraging words and reassuring presence made viewers feel that they too could become artists. The joy of painting quickly expanded to over 275 PBS stations across the United States. Bob's lighthearted humor and catchphrases, such as happy little trees and let's add some happy little clouds, became beloved parts of the show. His approachability and positive attitude drew in millions of viewers, from aspiring artists to those simply looking for a peaceful escape from their daily lives. The Kowalskis played a crucial role in Bob's rise to fame. They helped him manage his growing brand, which included instructional books, videos, art supplies, and workshops. Bob Ross Incorporated, the company they founded together, flourished into a multi-million dollar enterprise. But despite his success, Bob remained humble and focused on sharing his love of painting with others. 
He often said, I can't go anywhere without people coming up to me and telling me how much they love painting because of the show. Bob's relationship with the Kowalskis, however, was not without its challenges. As the business grew, tensions occasionally arose. Bob's former mentor, William Alexander, felt betrayed by Bob's success, accusing him of copying his technique. Bob always acknowledged Alexander's influence, but the rift between them remained. Despite these difficulties, Bob's commitment to his craft and his fans never wavered. Bob's unique style and persona were key to his enduring appeal. He created a safe space where people felt encouraged to explore their creativity without fear of judgment. His gentle guidance and the repetitive calm of his voice offered comfort and reassurance. There's nothing wrong with having a tree as a friend, he would say, highlighting his belief in the simple joys of life. As the joy of painting continued to grow in popularity, Bob's fame spread beyond the television screen. He became a cultural icon. Personal Life Despite Bob Ross's public persona as a beloved television painter, his personal life was much more private and complex. Bob was married three times and had two children. His first marriage was to Vivian Ridge, and together they had a son, Robert Stephen Steve Ross, who also became a talented painter. Bob and Vivian divorced in 1977, reportedly due to Bob's infidelity. This period was challenging for Bob, but he remained devoted to his son, often encouraging Steve to pursue his own artistic talents. Shortly after his first marriage ended, Bob married Jane Ross. Jane was not only his wife, but also a supportive business partner. Their partnership was strong, and they worked closely together until Jane's tragic death from cancer in 1992. This loss was a significant blow to Bob, both personally and professionally. He once reflected, You can do anything you want to do. This is your world. Yet, even in his world, loss and grief were harsh realities. In 1995, just two months before his own death, Bob married his third wife, Linda Brown. The reasons for this marriage remained somewhat unclear, and Bob's private nature meant he kept many details of his personal life away from the public eye. Despite his fame, Bob valued his privacy and preferred to keep his family life separate from his television persona. Bob's relationship with his son, Steve, was particularly significant. Steve appeared on The Joy of Painting several times, showcasing his own painting skills. Bob hoped that Steve would continue his legacy, but their relationship was strained at times, especially when Steve chose not to follow directly in his father's footsteps. Bob respected Steve's choices, but always believed in his son's talent, often saying, I think there's an artist hidden at the bottom of every single one of us. Beyond his immediate family, Bob also had complex relationships with his business partners. The Kowalskis, who helped Bob build his brand, were both friends and business associates. While their collaboration led to great success, it also brought about conflicts, especially as Bob's health declined. The partnership, initially built on mutual respect and shared goals, became strained due to differing priorities and visions for the future of Bob Ross Incorporated. Trials and Triumphs Internal struggles also emerged within Bob Ross Incorporated. The Kowalskis were primarily focused on maximizing profits, sometimes at the expense of quality or Bob's artistic integrity. This tension was exacerbated by the tragic death of Bob's wife, Jane, in 1992. Jane had been a stabilizing force and key partner in both Bob's life and business. Her passing not only left Bob heartbroken, but also led to a redistribution of her shares in the company, reducing Bob's influence and creating further friction with the Kowalskis. Bob's health battles added another layer of difficulty. A lifelong smoker, he suffered from several health issues, including two heart attacks and a battle with lymphoma. Despite these challenges, Bob kept his diagnosis private not wanting to burden his fans or business associates with his illness. He continued filming episodes of The Joy of Painting, maintaining his cheerful demeanor and positive messages. In painting, you have unlimited power, 
He would say, hiding the personal pain behind his gentle smile and reassuring words. As Bob's condition worsened, the Kowalskis grew anxious about the future of Bob Ross Incorporated. They pressured Bob to sign over the rights to his name and likeness, anticipating the potential loss of their primary asset. Bob resisted, wanting to ensure his legacy was preserved on his own terms. This struggle intensified as his health declined, with the Kowalskis persistently trying to secure their control over his intellectual property. Bob Ross passed away on July 4, 1995, at the age of 52. His death marked the end of an era for millions of fans who had found solace and inspiration in his serene landscapes and gentle words. Yet, even after his passing, the conflicts did not cease. The Kowalskis immediately moved to gain full ownership of Bob Ross Incorporated, leading to legal battles over the rights to Bob's name and work. Bob's son, Steve Ross, faced significant challenges in the wake of his father's death. According to Bob's will, the rights to his name and likeness were to be inherited by Steve and Bob's half-brother, Jimmy Cox. However, the Kowalskis contested the will, claiming they owned everything Bob had created while working under their company. This legal battle was grueling for Steve, who struggled to uphold his father's legacy against formidable opposition. Steve recalled, they told me I could never create a business around painting with the Bob Ross name, but I could do anything else. This statement underscored the ongoing fight to control the Bob Ross brand. Despite losing the lawsuit in June 2019, Steve remained determined to honor his father's memory. The legacy Bob Ross left behind was profound. The joy of painting continued to air on public television, and his episodes found new life on platforms like YouTube and Twitch, introducing his calming presence to new generations. Bob Ross's impact on art and television was undeniable. He democratized art, making it accessible to everyone, regardless of their skill level. His philosophy that, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents, resonated deeply with viewers, encouraging them to embrace creativity without fear. Bob's influence extended beyond his lifetime. His gentle approach and positive outlook inspired countless individuals to pick up a paintbrush for the first time. Through his calm demeanor and encouraging words, Bob brought the joy of creation into homes across the world, fostering a love for art that transcended age, background, and experience. His philosophy that there are no mistakes, only happy accidents, resonated deeply with viewers, encouraging them to embrace creativity without fear. Despite the legal and personal battles that marked his later years, Bob's enduring legacy is one of kindness, creativity, and unwavering belief in the power of art. His ability to find beauty in simplicity and his dedication to teaching others have left a lasting impression on millions. Bob's son, Steve, continues to honor his father's memory, ensuring that his teachings and artistic philosophy remain accessible to new generations. Even today, Bob Ross remains a beloved figure. His work continues to bring comfort and inspiration to many, proving that his legacy is far more than a brand or business. It's a testament to the simple, profound joy of painting. Platforms like YouTube and Twitch have introduced Bob's calming presence to new audiences, proving that his influence remains strong in the digital age. Bob's unique blend of artistry and encouragement has made him a cultural icon, reminding us of the importance of creativity in our lives. Bob Ross's story, filled with both triumph and struggle, serves as a reminder of the resilience of the human spirit and the enduring power of creativity. His gentle spirit and positive message continue to inspire countless individuals to explore their artistic potential. Bob's legacy is a celebration of the joy of painting and the belief that everyone, regardless of skill level, can create something beautiful. As we remember Bob Ross, we are reminded to appreciate the simple joys of life and the transformative power of art. His life and work remain a lasting testament to the impact one person can have on the world through kindness, creativity, and a love for painting.